Good morning, good morning, good morning. Peace be with you and also with you. We have a few announcements this morning, not that many. Um, next week, uh, the, lunch, the Life Alive brunch uh, will be having their monthly meeting, so that is our young adult group. So if you're watching or if you're hearing about it, if you have a friend, you want to tell somebody about it, we meet about once a month. It kind of varies every once in a while, but usually third Sundays. Uh, immediately following service, we walk about a couple of blocks and we find a restaurant that we quickly uh, have lunch. We usually meet for about an hour. Also, uh, one new thing that, that has come up, we have heard that there are many of you all who are present here in the sanctuary who don't get the opportunity to talk with our people who are in Zoom land. So immediately following the service, uh, after the passing of the peace, we actually invite you all to walk up here. There's a camera. As you all see, we can make sure uh, there's a microphone. Yes, there will be a microphone uh, that will be there. And if you actually want to like actually speak to one or two people, you actually have the opportunity to, to do so in person. Also, OK, I will admit there's been a little confusion about Open Newberry Street. And when does it start and when does it end? Uh, we made the joke, uh, Reverend Kate and I made the joke that after we put something in the bulletin, we will find out Saturday night what the actual dates are. And sure enough, we found out late Saturday night when the city of Boston actually released the dates. Um, thanks to Faith who reached out earlier, uh, this, earlier this summer, and we have heard multiple different stories. All right, so definitively speaking, we have, you can Google this, you can proof check me on this one, starting next Sunday, so that is August, I do not have a date, oh, August 21st, running for six Sundays through September 25th, Open Newberry will happen. So that will affect parking on the Newberry Street. Those, I do not think that the Berkeley Street parking will be affected. Uh, that one, don't, don't completely quote me on. But uh, there will be no parking officially from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. on those particular Sundays for the next six weeks. So if you want to Make sure you leave early if you are driving, if you want to take public transportation, that will be it. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? If not, I invite Tom to introduce today's music. During the summer months, uh, since we're using the same bulletin every week, the hymns and the organ pieces are gonna be announced. And today at Adam Izbitsky's uh, suggestion, um, I chose music that has a lot of mixed meter. As you'll hear in the gospel lesson, there's mentions of different kinds of fractions. So that's reflected in the music where every other measure, there's a change. Sometimes two beats, three beats, five, six, nine. And the prelude was by a German composer, um, Hermann Schrader. It doesn't have a title, just a tempo marking, poco vivace, which means a little bit lively or vivacious. And the offertory is by Maria Schneider, who is a composer and director of a big band jazz ensemble, and it's called Hang Gliding. And this is just the very opening of the piece. I've transcribed it for organ duet, so the, um, the rhythm section, the guitar, the piano, and the bass are pre-recorded, and then live I'll play over that, the wind section. And as you'll hear, pretty much every measure, every other measure is gonna have a different number of beats. join me for call to worship. Uh, repeat after me. We sing to God a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. We, we sing, sing to God, God a new song. Proclaim God's salvation day after day. Declare God's glory among nations. God's marvelous deeds among all people. We, we sing, sing to God, God a new song. song. Great is our God and most worthy of praise. God is to be revered above all other gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but our God made the heavens, splendor and majesty belonging to our God. Strength and glory are in God's sanctuary. We sing, we sing to, to God, God a new song. song. The opening hymn is in our black hymnal, black 442. I am pressing on the upward way.
We kindle Christ's light as a reminder of the eternal flame that is deep within us. We kindle Christ's light here in the sanctuary as a reminder, as a tangible reminder of Christ that is present with us. A light that always flickers, a light that always reminds us that Christ is with us. Please join me in the prayer for grounding in God's grace. God of healing mercies, we come to you this day as imperfect people. We know that you desire for us hope, happiness, and love, yet we have found so many ways in which to block your gifts or to grab hold of them as if we are entitled to them. We have given the pathway to peace in the witness of Jesus Christ. Christ taught us to live as people of compassion and service. But our service has been mostly for ourselves and for our own gratification. We have failed to be your church, your witness on earth. We have neglected the needs of others in our rush for our own comfort. Forgive us, O merciful God. Heal our wounded spirits. Turn us again to you that we may again learn of your love and mercy. Move us deeply to become partners in peace and hope for others. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you sent us. Please join me in a moment for silent prayer. Turn again, O people, to the God who always loves you. Remember God's loving mercy and faithfulness. In Jesus Christ, we are set free and made whole. Alleluia. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from the Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 49. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the, the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? 
And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? Thus, when you go with your accuser before a magistrate, on the way, make an effort to settle the case, or you may be dragged before the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer throw you in prison. God is still speaking the word of God. Thanks be to God. Church of the Covenant. But if you thought I was coming to bring words of peace, not today, not today. I'm going to bring a little bit of UCC energy though. Uh, I don't know if it's been a little bit lacking here at Church of the Covenant, but I'm bringing some UCC energy today. In the form of this book, it's called the unofficial, unofficial handbook of the United Church of Christ. The unofficial handbook of the United Church of Christ. Of course, it is officially published by United Church Press, so I don't know how unofficial this official book is. But there is one set of pages that I turn to in here a lot. And it's titled, Are You There, God? It's Me, Church. And you don't have to see the images in here, but this gets at when we are approaching a decision as a church body. And, you know, in our tradition, that comes most often at a church meeting, you know, maybe it's the whole church or maybe it's the council or some committee. But what this unofficial official book tells us is the difference between democracy and the congregational way. Because there is a difference. See, in a democracy, each person votes their conscience. Each person votes because they have intrinsic worth, and the majority wins, and the losers, they lose. That's democracy. And democracy works well, according to this unofficial official book, if a spirit of tolerance is present, and the vote is prepared for by education and debate. But that's not quite the UCC way when it comes to voting. In a polity like ours, you see, each person, each person is not trying to vote their own conscience. They're trying to vote what they think God's conscience is for our church. And each person has a vote not because of their intrinsic value, but because each one of us has access to the mind of God, has access to the Holy Spirit alive and at work within each one of us. And so when we have a vote, and when it's unanimous or close, then we take that as a sign of the Holy Spirit at work, because we all together are feeling like the same way about what God is calling our church to do. And the vote is prepared for by education, of course, but deep listening. And that P word, prayer, don't be afraid of it, y'all. So I have turned to that time and time again whenever there's some 
congregational meeting or anything that could be divisive, I'll whip out the book and I'll, at the beginning of the meeting, I'll say, now remember, we're not voting each one of us our own conscience. We're trying to vote God's conscience. We're trying to think about what God would have us do. And I always say that piece at the very end of how if we're unanimous or close to it, then that's a sign that the Holy Spirit is at work. But then I came across this gospel passage in preparation for today's service. And I gotta take it to Jesus. He says, I didn't come to bring peace on earth, I came to bring division. When you have five in a household, three against two you might have, two against three, people who should be close together are all of a sudden on the opposite sides. So maybe if we have a unanimous decision, it could be a sign of the Holy Spirit at work, but if it's close, maybe that's a sign that Jesus is at work. I got back into rereading the whole Gospel of Luke to see where are these times when there are divisions and how did Jesus sort it out because I don't really like this message. It doesn't fit well with my whole sense of spirituality and, you know, not rocking the boat but moving it along to the next wave and the next wave. And right near the beginning of the gospel, when the child Jesus is in the temple, Simeon says these wise words, this child will be the downfall and the rise of many. This child will be the downfall and the rise of many. I think about when a few chapters before in chapter 9, Jesus is going headed towards Jerusalem and he's going through Samaria and, you know, he has no problem with healing Samaritans or really anybody. But for some reason at this particular moment, the Samaritans don't want to welcome him. And so James and John, they say, well, should we call some fire from heaven on the Samaritans so that we can smite them or something? And Jesus says, no. No, let's just keep moving. When we talk about division, of course, one of our national prophets, you could say, Abraham Lincoln, is often quoted uh, this quote, which you will hear, and I've seen it in the news recently. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. Except he never said that. He said something quite like it. And I think the real quote is even better. It's a little bit longer, but let me read you what he really said. This was in 1838 to the Young Men's Lyceum in Springfield, Illinois. And in that address, Lincoln actually said, at what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring up among us. It cannot come from abroad. And then he said this, if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. 
maybe that quote, maybe Jesus's quote from the Gospel of Luke in our scripture reading today is a little bit more authentic because it's tougher, harder to hear, and maybe what we need to hear. Surely you have been in a situation when there were people on either side and you were in the middle not quite sure which way you would go. And maybe the people are closer to you on one side but you actually think they're wrong. And so you don't want to say so in front of them but you've got to take a stand. When it's two versus two, and you're the fifth person, what do you do? And the answer to that question is quite simple. It's what you did. When there was that time that you had to take a stand and you stayed quiet because you didn't want to upset those folks, that just might be what you do the next time. Where you have been bold in the past, you can be bold again. Jesus certainly upset many people, and it's not that that should be our goal, but think about this uh, section again from Luke, a couple chapters before our reading from today, this is not just in Luke, but it's in other Gospels too. Jesus is out doing his thing, and his mother and his siblings come up, and the disciples say, hey, Jesus, your mom, your siblings, they're out here for you. And he says, my mother and my siblings are the people who hear the word of God and do it. Now, I'm not one to say that Jesus was wrong. Actually, I could say that. I could say that. But I think what he's getting at is that those people could be doing the right thing, but are you? Are you? When it's been two versus two, and you were five, where did you lead? Jesus, in his sort of uh, inaugural address, you could say, in chapter 4 of Luke's Gospel, you, you know this, he comes out and he's given the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, and in it, he reclaims that message from Isaiah that his mission is for the poor, for the captive, for the blind, for who is in prison. That's whose side Jesus is on. That's who Jesus is working for. Now, I wouldn't say I'm rich, but I'm not poor. Never really been a captive. I have classes that work just fine. Never been in prison. So is Jesus on my side? That's not quite the question when we look at Jesus' statements from Luke 12. It's not, is Jesus on our side when we vote? It's, are we working for the types of people that Jesus was working for? In our decisions, when they're 50-50 and you are the tie breaker, don't think about, is Jesus on my side in this, but is what I'm voting for what Jesus would have me do for those people who are poor or captive or blind or in prison or, 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 or. We witnessed quite a tiebreaker in uh, the Senate just a few days ago with that big uh, 
I think they're calling it the Inflation Reduction Act, which could be called Build Back a Little Bit Better. I don't know. But it's, it's a big deal. And the fact that it made it through, and it had to, with 50-50 plus a tie-breaking vote, I think about what would I do if I were the vice president. I think for us, we get it. We know what we would have done, and it's probably the right choice that that was passed because we're going to maybe get somewhere on climate change. We're going to maybe get somewhere on uh, all these rich people that like to cheat on their taxes. We're going to maybe get somewhere on those things that clearly Jesus had something to say about. Let me fast forward a little bit to the end of Luke's Gospel, where Jesus is on the cross. And we know this. There were two people crucified on either side of him, and he was in the middle. The one says to him, save us. And the other says, he's done nothing wrong, but Jesus says to the one, today you will be with me in paradise. Whenever you have a chance to be in that position of forgiving, of tie-breaking, of even in the tough situation of being among friends, and you have to make the decision of where to go, think about are you working for the poor, for the captive, for the blind, for who is in prison? And then you might just be following Jesus. But if you demure, if you get shy, if you don't want to rock the boat and think that being nice is the, always the right answer, you might not be walking with Jesus in that moment. When we think of Simeon, who prophesied rightly that that child Jesus would be the downfall and the rise of many, I think about where we are as a church all these 2,000 years later, how have we gotten it wrong? How have we uplifted the church at times over Christ himself? How have we gone out and been a witness for building up our communities, but not building up God's message, not actually working for those things that Jesus would work for. For Jesus came to bring fire to the earth, and how he wished it were already kindled. What stress he was under until it was completed. Friends, have we taken 2,000 years and still not completed the task? It's not to bring peace on earth. It's not to bring peace on earth. But it's to bring some division sometimes. To bring division to those people, you know who they are, the rich, the greedy, to divide what they have and to redistribute to the poor, to those who are in prison, who must be set free. My friends, if we are doing that, we just might be following Jesus. We just might be kindling that Holy Spirit flame. And we just might be completing that task that God has set for us.
So let it be so. Amen. God has provided even for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. For whatever abundance we have of time, treasure, or love, let it be given to the work of the church. Um, for those of you on Zoom, I think there'll be a link in the chat or you can mail a check to 67 Newberry. For those of us in the sanctuary, there'll be plates in the back.
us these gifts and may they be used to further your work in our church, in our community, and the world. Amen. It is now that time that we have in our service in which we share uh, our celebrations and our concerns. Following each person who shares, we, we say, God in your grace, and we respond, receive our prayer. Is there anything from the Red Book? I'm looking at it. I do not, cannot see that far. Someone has written in it. There's none? Okay. Thank you. So here, we will start here in the sanctuary and then we'll go to Zoom. So if there's anyone here who would like to share a celebration or concern. Oh. All right. Make sure that when you use the microphone, and use it as close as possible. All right? So everybody can hear. I'd like to ask a prayer, please, for the family of Graciela Chavarria. Our sister, our sibling community in Nicaragua, um, she passed away the day before yesterday. She's a sister-in-law of Maximino, who some of you may know. He's come here before. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. I'd like to ask for prayers for two friends of mine. One uh, by the name of Jane, who has recently been diagnosed with two cancerous sites. And uh, another friend by the name of Wendy H., who was uh, walking on the sidewalk when she was slammed by a bicycle and uh, woke up in the hospital three days in ICU. She has a brain bleed eight days in the hospital. She will be uh, weeks or months uh, recovering from that. She has no recollection of the accident. Uh, I won't go into the gory details. The cyclist broke his or her nose for what that's worth. God in your grace, receive our prayer. I'd like to request uh, prayers for Wendy from our own congregation who is still in rehab and also pray for any other health concerns of members of our congregation that might have today. God in your grace. Hi. Um, I want to celebrate uh, my friend, uh, for my friend Mark here, who visited uh, Boston yesterday and today. Mark is my colleague, a Presbyterian minister uh, at the Presbyterian Center, and he is a seasoned minister who has been doing a lot of ministry, including but not limited to the UN Presbytery, uh, uh, right, Presbyterian ministry in UN in New York City, and then also the New York Presbyterian. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to celebrate the friendship of Mark um, with me and then many more here uh, with the covenant. So thank you, Mark. And then I am grateful for the friendship. God in your grace. I want to offer prayers again this week for the Tolls family. Um, who shared updates via Kathy last week. Um, we know that Laura's aunt died in a car accident and her uncle is, I believe, still in the hospital. And then we learned this week, as you, most of you saw in your email, that uh, John's mother passed away this week. Um, she has been ill since she had COVID in the fall. So, um, for the whole Tolls family and for their extended families, we pray, God in your grace, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Hi, I would like, 
everyone to please pray for my friend Eliana Burgos. She's 21 and her mom just passed away from cancer right as her senior year is starting. Um, and then for my Nana who just got over cancer, so just praying that she stays healthy. Thanks. God in your grace, receive our prayer. I saw one more hand. So I'm Mark, and I too am grateful for friendship, and I'm grateful for being here in Boston and meeting So Jung's support community. Uh, for those of us in Louisville, we've heard a lot about you folks, <laughs> and it is great to meet you in person. And I give thanks to God for you and the support you provide So Jung. God in your grace, receive our prayer. If there are none, Turned off the wrong microphone. If there are none here in the sanctuary, I will turn it over to our Zoom community, to Diane. Yes, if anyone has other prayer requests, please feel free to put them in the chat Receive our prayer. If there are none in the chat, Diane, um, all right. Please join us in prayer that is led by Kathleen for our pastoral prayer. Will you pray with me? This morning we feel a breeze and can enjoy being outside once again. But a few days ago, we felt the scorching heat beat down upon us as records were broken. We worried about our health, our planet, and wondered if this was a sign of things to come. We celebrate historic legislation being passed and that documents will, are no longer hidden. Yet we lament that at the time the truth is being reported, lies, hateful rhetoric, and conspiracies also hit the airwaves. At a time when we can travel, relax, reconnect, and go to events again, we are also well aware that viruses are still a threat and that health issues still need to be dealt with. God is with us, showing us a blessing and a smile and comforting us during tears. May we listen and feel God's guidance as we move through it all. Amen. Number 47 in the Black Hymnal. All who are able, please rise.
place and into the world. Vote and act and be in the way that Jesus would have you be. Don't be afraid, even if you have to be so in front of someone whose feelings you might hurt. And friends, as you go from this place, as you go into your week, may the love of God, the support of Christ, and the care of the Holy Spirit go with you this and every day. Go in peace. Amen. And now please join us in the exchange of peace. For those on Zoom, please, un please unmute now. Uh, peace be with you. And also. Oh, so with you.